Hello, this is John from the Haunt Informer. And I'm Glenn from Fall Ritual. And this is episode six of Fall Informer. And today we are talking about midways. Basically about our uh, our favorite midways, um, the ones we like. Um, and I guess a comparison of to a proper midway and um, ones that don't really have a midway, the ones where you kind of just get, you know, you don't get to pick and choose which ones what attractions you do they kind of just set you at one and just you know go from there so that's what we'll be discussing today yes 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 and we can start out with midways the haunts that have midways and a great midway is that field of screams they have plenty of games they have multiple escape rooms so there's lots to do when you're waiting so. yeah i mean i i always say field of screams is kind of like uh like you could do so much at Field of Screams without going through any attraction. You know, so if you don't want to do any of the attractions, you want to just want to do all the outside stuff, they got a ton of stuff to do from, you know, games to escape rooms to, you know, bands playing. At one point, I remember one year, I think they had like a half pipe, so like skateboarders we're there you know you can wow. you can skateboard at like this half pipe it, it was pretty crazy um yeah. you I know, know you do uh, rap battles in the past past years they do rap battles oh really mm -hmm. um you know the, the the photo booth and everything and um they, there's so much to do and you know tons of actors walking around which is always a plus for for a good midway um tons of photo ops it's just I, I think Field of Screams has got a lot, lot to do without, you know, actually going inside um, a haunt. And like we said before, you can get to that midway area of Field of Screams without uh, getting a ticket. So uh, all that stuff would be free to get into. But then obviously you got to, you know, pay for the escape rooms and games and all that. But it's a fairly cheap night if you want to just hang out with friends. Oh, yeah. There are lots of food options during Field of Screams. There's a whole bunch of trailers for the off-season haunt for Halfway to Halloween when we just went recently. There was just two. There was Annie Ann's and a more generic one. And actually, if you don't want to get any of the food at Field of Screams, you can actually go right across the street to Rudders in case you like Rudders. So. Yeah. I think another, another great uh, midway is that uh, when it's fully operational and everything is uh, Bloodshed Farms. They have an incredible midway section. Um, tons of actors walking around, uh, tons of photo ops, and all the fog that they use inside their attractions start coming out into this midway area. Nice. And with the music playing, with the fog, with the actors, it actually becomes like their fifth attraction. When, Of course, when everything's opening and uh, running you know like it was in the past um they definitely have they, you know tons of games to do you know food vendors you know it's always great when you know these haunts have like you know music playing outside yes you know that 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 adds that element to uh you know being outside before you even get into the haunt, if it's just this, you know, great atmosphere they got going on with games and music and stuff like that. Yeah, I really like the soundtrack for Terra Farm when I was waiting in line for the haunt in Newport, Pennsylvania. Terra Farm, when you're waiting in line, it's not music, it's just creepy soundtracks. And I really like that because it was getting dark and I was waiting in line and there was some scare actors going along scaring you. There was a clown and there was a crazy guy with an axe. So you were just getting pumped up for the haunt and just hear this creepy music. And they had a photo op with some Ghost Ride Productions like the pumpkin minions that you see, like the pumpkin henchmen at Field of Screams, a couple of those by the food booth. They have those in front of Terra Farms entrance. And then you go in, you hear the rules, and then you start it out. So I love it when haunts have a good soundtrack. Oh, totally. Yeah, and I'm talking just like, you know, it's great when you hear like actual music being played, like pumped through, but 
Hotel of Horror, they don't really have much of Midway because it's only, you know, one building and there's not much to do out out in the parking lot area, out in the open. Gotcha. But the soundtrack they use to get you, you know, while you're waiting outside, you know, I said it in my reviews, it's just kind of like you're going to a funeral. It's just it's very, like, creepy, you know, these sound effects. So that's, that works well, really good for their, you know, what they got going on there because the outside music is representing what you're about ready to walk through. Um, so that's really unique because it's not just, you know, songs that they're playing. It's not just bands and songs and stuff like that. It's just it's these, like you said, these sound effects, these, you know, these haunting things that you're hearing as you're waiting to get in. Midnight Syndicate, I believe, is the company that makes a lot of awesome, creepy soundtracks for haunted mm -hmm. attractions and the haunted attraction industry. So definitely check them out. Mm -hmm. Of course, obviously, one of, one of the biggest ones that have um, the Midway and the things to do outside of, of attraction is uh, Frightland. And Frightland is working at uh, full operation. Um, they got like a full-on carnival going on with rides and games and food vendors and I mean you want to talk about doing so much without actually going into attraction I mean I think I think Freightland probably has everyone beat in that in that aspect um which is so much to do there's just so craziness of rides and games and stuff like that not to mention a great gift shop too you know you, you, I, I feel haunts with their midways to gotta have a really cool gift shop and you know more things yeah. to do yeah it's great when you have everything it's great when you have the gift shop you got the good actors you have mobile options to do you can do axe throwing you could get donuts at donut shack like at bates motel mm -hmm. and they have zombie hunt you can shoot zombies they would have that years ago they had that maybe they'll bring that back this year if you if they have it open this year, definitely check it out. It's worthwhile. It's awesome. It's an interactive zombie game. We actually get to shoot live zombie actors, and you get to shoot at animatronics. And it's a laser gun, so it's awesome. Nice, yeah. It, it always it's always awesome when you know these haunts have extra things to do other than the attractions. Photo ops is another great thing. You know, uh, we've been to many places where there's just so um, night of terror. Um, yes. Creamy Acres out in New Jersey, they got a ton of photo ops um, before you get to the attractions. That's also what I love about, you know, a, a proper midway. Not only is it the photo ops, it's the actors roaming around, it's all that. It's You get to pick what you want to do first. Yeah, yeah. You know, and, and I think that helps a lot, especially with uh, crowd control. Um as opposed to ones that don't, as opposed to ones that you have to get in one line. Every single person there gets in one line and kind of gets like, you know, stuck with the same group of people and the same, you know, you don't get to pick and choose. Well, some haunts, a haunt that I've been to that is more linear, where you go in one line pretty much, basically one line, and you can get VIP if you want to to speed up the process, is Reaper's Revenge in Scranton, PA. You wait in one line, pretty much, and that takes you on the hayride, and you go through a whole bunch of sets on the hayride, and then that drops you off at the Lost Carnival and with the security shack, and that's an awesome interactive experience there, and then that would take you to the New Haunt Delirium, and then you would get back on the hayride and go through the last scenes on the hayride, and then that would take you to Sector 13 in Pitch Black. So it's a whole just giant experience. And when you wait for the Lost Carnival, there's like a little bit of a line, but it's not bad. It's it's not bad at all. Right. It's, yeah, it's when like a haunts are doing, especially with like when they're doing like a hayride and it's just this continuous line and like you can't, you have to do it first when they have to, when they have such an order. Um, yeah, I feel it really gets backed up, like really starts to like the, the lines just get crazy long and it's because they only got so many hayride carts to, to go. So they got to wait for it to come back. And it's just you just get these crazy lines and it sucks that you can't, you know, oh, well, look at this line. You know, this line's too long. So I'll try this instead. Where it's like where you're just stuck in one line and, you know, you got to 
you got to wait it out. Um, and I understand that haunts the way there's certain ones are set up. They can't do that. You know, they can't have a proper midway. Um, so they have to do their, their, got to work with what they got. I think an actual proper midway is, is my favorite as opposed to getting in one line and just kind of going through everything all with the same people. Cause if you get stuck with an annoying person or annoying crowd yeah. and you're just stuck with them throughout the whole, the whole experience and that can get, and that can ruin your experience. Yeah. So, and what would you say was the most unique game you've seen in a midway? I would say the most unique game I saw and the most fun I had playing a game would definitely be the zombie hunt interactive experience. And then second, that would be Skeleball, which from the company Scare Factory, they had that Reaper's Avengers midway. It is a small midway, but there's many things to do. They got some food vendors and some games to play and they have a little gift shop and they have a good photo op. I actually use that for the thumbnail of my video and it's really awesome. So there's lots of cool things to do with these haunts and I really like Scale Ball. I had to throw foam prop skulls into baskets with a skeleton and you only have a couple seconds and he's taunting you. So I really like that game. So what was the most unique game <laughs> and the most fun you've had at haunts? Which one would be for you? Um... Oddly enough, I don't do too many games. Um, we did escape rooms. Uh, yeah, we did some escape rooms, and uh, I had thrown, I did a couple, you know, well, just that field of screens. I did the uh, the zombie head toss thing, um, and, and the games are fun, but I, I don't, the, most, the most fun I had playing the game, um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. That's, that's a good question, but like I said, I don't do many, I don't do many games, but uh, yeah, the zombie head toss. How about Bloodshed Farms? I know I saw videos of them on YouTube. They have a whole bunch of cool stuff like that. Oh, uh, they got yeah. a bunch of, yeah, they got a bunch of cool games and stuff. I don't think I ever did it. They actually have a uh, pumpkin smashing thing mm -hmm. where you get like a sledgehammer type thing and you can smash pumpkins and stuff. That's awesome. Uh, but I, I, I never done anything. I'm actually kind of terrified to do axe throwing. I've never done any type of axe throwing. Um, it seems kind of, you know, dangerous. I think I would like hurt myself doing it. They always have an instructor there with you, making sure you're safe and they tell you how to do it. And so they try yeah, to make it safe. So my, I freaking take my ear off or something trying to throw it over. Oh, geez. I, I'm so I, honestly, I, I've never done any, uh, any axe throwing or, uh, anything like that i have done actually i have done like it's not a game but i've done like the simulated like coffin rides yeah the last ride yeah and and they were they were pretty cool i did the one out in uh uh hotel of horror actually has one they have a uh like a simulated like you get in a coffin and kind of like bounces you around like you're getting but you actually did a live one yes i did a so live coffin ride pretty, at kim's if you go to kim's this fall season definitely do it and kim will drive you herself that was wild. It's only ten dollars. Do it. It's insane. I, honestly, I think a good a good midway needs to have something stuff to do outside the attraction, some type of game or activity, or um, a cool gift shop, music playing, actors roaming around, um, photo ops, and of course, I think every haunt should have donuts. Yeah, donuts are awesome. You, your haunt should be selling donuts. Like, you know, that should just be a, a given. Pumpkin donuts, apple cider donuts, it should be a given. Your haunt should have donuts. I read an article in Haunt World magazine years ago about Headless Horsemen and how they incorporated a whole bunch of gift shops and different eateries and it actually increased their revenue for the year a ton because people would stop and they'd have donuts, they'd have different treats, they'd have coffee, they had a whole bunch of things. So that actually will help your haunt if you have multiple different stands, especially if they have fun names like, like Ghoulish Delight or they call it something like Witches brew if you call them fun things like that people would really like that yeah i i absolutely like a food aspect is a, a key element of getting into your haunt and everything and you said if you had the donuts at beach motel you know what i'm talking about their donuts are just incredible you know the haunt's great but for me going out to Bates, it's like i gotta get those donuts and those are like the best and they do have a cool midway with you know stuff to do gift shops axe throwing um, i felt they could use a little more actors uh walking around 
But uh, other than that, do they have they do have photo ops, and you can always get a picture in front of like the giant, you know, hotel with like that looks like teeth and everything. Yeah, so that's nice. Okay, now I know there are some haunts out there that it's really hard to have in Midway, like the ones that are in malls, the ones that are just you know in abandoned factories or buildings, stuff like that. Um, and that goes back to, you know, you got to really work with what you have. And now I've been to places where, you know, just because a haunt doesn't have like that midway area much to do, they do so much while you're waiting in line. Um, again, goes to a hotel of horror. Um, again, in a normal season, not these, not a pandemic season, um, they have a payphone hanging on the wall so while you're waiting if the payphone rings you could pick it up and it's just kind of like this creepy voice talking to you you know which I always thought was really cool and they got line actors going up and down and um so I always thought that like waiting in line could also be like a really cool experience if if they do it right and it's done right Bennett's Curse down in Maryland it's inside a mall they really can't do anything outside um, they do have some photo ops, but once you, like, go in to where you have to wait in line, it is all, like, 3D nice. and everything. They give you glasses. It is a really, really cool waiting area that Ben and Curse has. Um, so, Hans can do it. Hans can have a really cool, you know, doing stuff while you're waiting in line if, if they don't have, like, a proper, proper midway. It's like that at the Darkness Haunted House in St. Louis. Outside, they have a couple actors roaming around, which is fun. And they right next to the Darkness is St. Louis Escape. So you can just walk right over the St. Louis Escape. That's actually another part of the building next to it. And you can do a whole bunch of escape rooms. And at the end of the Darkness, they have a five-minute escape, a five-minute coffin escape. And you actually aren't laying down. You're actually standing up in a coffin. You have to find your way out of that and then mm. do a puzzle in the room and get out. So that's super cool. And before you get in the haunt, you walk in and they have the rules up there and you walk in and the whole area is themed immediately when you're waiting. And there's sand on the floor. I actually didn't experience the sand on the floor. I only saw that on YouTube, but I went there before and it was themed without the sand and it was really cool. So right off the bat, there's immersive theming. Yeah, I mean, that, that's awesome. It's like, it always should be like, as soon as you get on property, there should be something going on. There should be, you know, stuff, actors coming at you, photo ops, music, something should be going on. Um, like as soon as you pass some type of ticket. Um, Halls of Horror, I don't think you've been to Halls of Horror. No, but I'd love to in Palmerton, Pennsylvania. Yes, Halls of Horror is a, is a really odd location seeing how it's on like a main street down in like main street like Palmerton and I mean talking that there's like businesses all around on this street and all of a sudden there's just like you know a haunted attraction and honestly like you, you know you park on the street and go to so they can't have any proper like midway but oh my god the amount of photo ops they have and they have actors walking up and down the street and it's like music it's amazing like the music that is just like blaring out of this place as it's like on a business street like it's it's unbelievable what they're doing like i don't know if they had to like you know get permission to do all that the permits or something yeah but it, it's crazy what they're doing you know i think the owner owns like a hearse he's got a hearse parked out there and he's got like um I posted on my Instagram. It's like me and like a like a like a noose type thing. They they got that. They got you know you can sit in a coffin and get tons of photo op stuff. It, it's as soon as you get out of your car, it's like banned. It's like the haunts on. I like it when haunts have something that is very memorable and easy to remember about their haunt. Like at Frightland, I haven't been there, but I know from the marketing and you posted about it, they have the giant silo that looks like a skeleton. And that's super <laughs> cool. I like it when haunts have things that are easy to remember with that. Like that. Right. Cool. Like, like that's their thing. You know, it's like, for, yeah, Frightland's got that giant silo. Um, yeah. The field yeah. screams obviously has their big field of screams banner. Archway. Archway, yeah. dare to return. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think Han should have something that is like recognizable. Like as soon as you say it, like that's, you know, that's that Han. We touched upon gift shops earlier and having a really good quality gift shop is awesome. And you don't need a big gift shop to have an awesome gift shop. It can be very small and you can just have tons of awesome things. And you want to have lots of options for your customers. You want them to be able to choose lots of different shirts and magnets and keychains. You want them to have lots of things. And also you want to incorporate unique art like they do at Bloodshed Farms. Like we talked to Jim, he said they incorporate cool artwork. And you can talk about that, Glenn. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I was so impressed with with uh, Bloodshed Farms gear shop. You know, I always like to support the haunts with a T-shirt. I got tons of haunt T-shirts and stuff like that. So I'm always looking for for a, a, a cool gift shop. Um, Bloodshed is just unbelievable. It's like one one of a kind stuff. Very unique, handcrafted stuff that I've never seen anything like that in a gift shop. Um, and of course, they have T-shirts for their their haunt and everything. Um, but uh, they got a great, great gift shop. Um, Frontland's got a great gift shop. Uh, you know, Field of Screens, obviously. Um, but yeah, I, I, I always look for a gift shop. I always look for unique things. Um, said not just T-shirts. I, you know, my car's covered in stickers from one of the attractions. So oh, nice. Um, I actually have a license plate. I posted this on my Instagram. Oh, yeah, wow. I actually have a license plate frame. Uh, from Frightland that I got the very first time I went out there, I think in like 2002. Wow. Um, they don't even sell those anymore. So, but uh, anything cool and unique like that, I'm always like, you know, looking out for. Yeah, some people have collections of mugs from haunted houses. I think Howling Haunts 365 has those, a collection of mugs from haunts. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I got, I got a ton of t-shirts, uh, hoodies, you know, sweatshirts. And definitely um, ticket subs. I got to collect cool oh. stubs. That's something I love about haunts when they have a cool ticket. Like when yeah. we talked about Field of Screams and Kim's Crypt last episode, I love that they all had cool tickets. Like Kim's on the ticket and it just looks great. I like when they have cool marketing for that. One of, one of the best ticket stubs I've seen was at Bennett's Curse. They had one of the coolest tickets. Look at, and they made you give it back. Oh man. <laughs> you couldn't keep it. I'm like, oh, man, I'd like let me just keep it. Like, I'm not gonna come back and try and come back in again. Like, I just want to keep my ticket stuff. <laughs> um, but it was I, I can't really remember what it was now, but I just remember it being like really, really awesome. Thanks, Curse has lots of awesome marketing. The silk. Yeah, they do. They, yeah. they do. Um it, that was a really cool haunt, Bennett's Curse. Um again, they can't really do much with their midway since you know it's a mall. Um, but once you step inside of it, it's, it's on, man. It's like, you know, they got photos ops outside, but, uh, once you step in there, man, it is like, it's already like 3d and the, the waiting line's awesome. Um, but the gift shop at the end of Hell's Gate in Lockport, Illinois is great. They actually have a photo up in there where you can meet the mother of Hell's Gate. It's actually a standy. It's actually a prop they made. So that's cool. And you can, there's lots of different t-shirts you can get. And I think you can actually get keys as in the key to Hell's Gate. What's interactive about Hell's Gate at the end, I also like really interesting ends the haunted houses when it's not just a chainsaw. I love chainsaw ends, but I like it when I see a unique twist. And near the end of Hell's Gate, not only was there the Dragon Lair, there also was an escape room-esque area where you had to find the key of Hell's Gate. And if you did, you would get your ticket for free, which is awesome. So I love it when haunts do interactive things like that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, another really cool um, gift shop and like kind of midway is Lehigh Valley Screen Park. Um, because at the end of the... Uh, the, the attraction, the first attraction, you actually go out of the attraction and right into the gift shop. Oh, okay. And um, they have photo ops there, uh, which is really cool. They got the Lehigh Valley, they got tons of like bonfires going and music playing. And I got to check them out. I'd look. I, I hope, I really hope Lehigh Valley can uh, rebuild from uh, the, the fire from last year and just come back stronger and better and yeah. all that stuff. I really hope they're going to be open this year. Yeah, I, I would totally go out there and support them. I'd love to see what they have.
Yeah, they're running a great haul out there with uh, some really cool stuff. I got a T-shirt from out there. And, um, yeah, really cool, really cool midway they got going on, going on out there. And I like it when actors actually make interactive pictures with you. I love it when they have like a fake axe coming at you and you got a picture with Michael Myers at Bloodshed Farms and you have an interesting story about that. You can tell that. <laughs> I will say 100% that Michael Myers out at Bloodshed Farms was the best Michael Myers I've ever seen at any haunt. Um, he not break character. Just I mean, he's like literally like dragging me over. I have no idea what he's doing. But he's like dragging me over to get, get this photo op where he's like behind me, he's got the knife and my, my girlfriend's all like screaming. Um, unbelievable, unbelievable that Michael Myers out at uh, Bloodshed. But uh, that's that's what I'm talking about. This is like the whole topic of this, uh, this episode is just like these awesome fun things to do uh, without even going into attraction, you know. Yes. So there's tons to see at Haunted Attractions, and we are going to keep on giving you videos. And you can contact us via email or on social media. And my social media is on Facebook, Instagram, and on Twitter. My Facebook is The Haunt Informer. On Instagram, it's Haunt underscore Informer. And on Twitter, it is at Haunt Informer. And my email is hauntinformer at gmail.com, and that's all lowercase. Yeah, and you can find me on Facebook and Instagram. Um, at Fall Ritual, Instagram, it's all Fall Ritual with one word. Um, I'm on there more than I am Facebook. Um, yeah, and my email is fallritual1031 at gmail.com. And feel free to email me with any questions. And definitely, if you want to be on the Fall Informer show, definitely drop your name in the comments below or email us or contact us on social media. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Or if you have any suggestions or you want to see yes. on the show. Yes, you do if you have too. certain topics you want us to talk about, definitely drop in the comments below. And that was John from the Haunt Informer. And I'm Glenn from Fall Ritual. And that was episode six of Fall Informer. Until next time, happy hauntings.